Hello boys and girls, let's learn about events and delegates and we will start with delegates. So simply put, a delegate is just a variable which holds a method instead of data. So to declare a delegate, uh, just use the delegate keyword. So what follows here is the signature of the function we would like to store. So for now, let's just uh, store a function with a return type of void and let's call it do something. And let's say that it takes an argument uh, of an int. So to simplify what a delegate definition is, it's just the signature of a function. It's not holding data. It's not even holding the function. It's just the uh, setup of the function, the guidelines, if you will. So it's comparable to a class definition, okay? It's not the actual class instance. It's just the definition of the class. Uh, if we want to use our delegate, we need to now make an instance uh, of this delegate type. So let's do that. Let's say public, and this will be of type do something, and we'll call this something. Cool, so now we have a variable of type do something and we can now assign to this just as if we would assign a variable of a class or an int, right? So let's make a constructor here and let's assign a function to something. So let's make a new function here and we'll call this uh, function one, right? And obviously it's going to be taking in the int and returning void just like our signature does here. And here we will write to the console and we'll say uh, function function one called with value uh, num. Let's just fix that. Cool, so now this uh, variable actually holds a function. We can now call it and put in something like one, two, three. And if we press play here, we'll see function one has been called with value one, two, three. Also, sometimes you don't actually know if something has a value. Uh, obviously we do here because we're assigning it right above it, uh, but you should check your uh, delegates before calling them to see if they're null. If they're not null, then you can call it. And uh, null propagation makes this much nicer for us. We can just uh, do it like that with a question mark and an invoke. It does the same thing. Cool, so now we could actually uh, assign this to a, another function and this one would be called function two. And we'll just copy that and just change that a little bit. And we can call this one again. And let's just say four, five, six. And then play. And there you go. So as well as directly assigning a value to our delegate, we can also subscribe functions to the delegate. So let's remove this. And instead of directly assigning, we can say plus equals function one, and we can also subscribe it to plus equals function two. And now when we call something, and let's just say random number and press play, we'll see now that both of them are called function one and function two. And funnily enough, I have just introduced you to the concept of events. Uh, although technically we can't call it an event unless we use the event keyword here. Uh, I'll go over what the event keyword is in a moment. But uh, events are just a way for classes to notify other classes and objects that uh, something has happened or more specifically an event has occurred. But before continuing, let's step out of the dark ages for a moment uh, because there are better ways to do this in our modern world. I have not manually declared a delegate for many, many years. So there are modern single line alternatives to combine these two lines. Uh, and the first one is event handler. And let's just remove this stuff for now. So the event handler is the standard way to trigger events in C Sharp. So the event handler requires two parameters. The first one being uh, object of the sender. So this is typically the uh, object that is firing the event. So we can just say this, for example, and then event args, which is a way for you to uh, pass custom data. Right now, it's just a very simple object. Uh, and I'll just say empty for now. But you can expand event args to uh, add whatever properties you want and that's an easy way for you to pass data through your events. And although this is the most common way to set up your events, it's not always uh, what you need. Especially in game dev, you usually don't need uh, this extra information about the caller of the event. So we have another even easier uh, pre-made delegate and that is of type action. So let's remove this. So action is just a uh, delegate with a return type of void and also uh, no arguments. And you use your action delegates in the same way that you use your uh, manually created uh, delegates. So you can just do that and create a new method. Let's call this a simple function 
Uh, you can also directly assign it using uh, an anonymous function like this. And actually, if you want, you can assign it a value directly in the declaration, right? It's saying that it's uh, gonna be ignored because we're doing that. So if you want some uh, to be able to pass extra data through, you can use the generic version. So right now, uh, we want something with an int. So we can now say something plus equals, and we'll say the uh, function one, and we'll also say function two. Cool, so that's a much easier way, I'm sure you'll admit. And if you need more data, you can uh, obviously add more data to the generic type. Um, it can be classes, it can be whatever. <laughs> and if you look, they've actually uh, manually assigned up to T16. So um, it almost seems silly that it had to be this way, but I suppose, I suppose they thought about it and that's the best way to do it. Uh, if you need a return type for your event, which is a little bit weird, uh, I've never used a return type for event. I think uh, it, it seems a little bit clumsy, but you can use the func pre-made delegate. The difference between an action and func is that with an action, uh, the very last parameter here will just be a return type. So everything before it will be the, uh, the, the parameters for the function, the last one will be the return type. So this is just saying that the functions that you have assigned to this uh, does not match the signature that you've declared. So if we were to like change this to a string and just return anything, uh, it will now say function two is, is applicable. It's, it's, it's good to go. Okay, but that was enough theory. Let's actually put something into practice. Okay, so we've got three classes on the right here. We've got a guild, we've got a member welcomer, and then we've got a guild hall here where you can add a bedroom for the member. So let's say we wanna keep these three classes uh, ignorant of, of one another, okay? We wanna keep them decoupled, uh, and we would like these two to action anytime a new member has been added. So we can quite easily handle that uh, using events. So let's make a public event of type action, and this will take in a string, and this will be called new member added. And in our add member function, we will say new member added, and we'll check it for null, and we'll invoke it, and we'll send in the member name. So over in my main method here, I've created instances of the three classes. So now we can start hooking up our events. So we could say uh, guild, new member added, and let's assign that to the uh, welcomer dot welcome member. And then we'll say guild, new member added, and let's assign this one to the hall, add bedroom. So now if we press play, we'll see a welcome tarot dev and a room has been added for me, which is nice. If you know that your event does not need to be tied to a specific instance that you've created of the class, you can make it static, which provides us a few luxuries. So let's just remove these uh, assignments here. Because it's static now, we don't need a specific reference of the class. So in our uh, welcomer, for example, we can now say guild directly from the class, whoops, uh, add new member and we'll say straight to welcome member. This obviously breaks the decoupled nature, but uh, sometimes decoupling is not always a priority. Uh, I find myself using static events far more than instance events. A good example of a static event would be, uh, say you've got a whole bunch of enemies that derive from a base enemy class. You could have a enemy killed event and your application doesn't necessarily care what enemy it is. It's just that an enemy has died. So your UI could, uh, pull into that event, add to the kill count, or you could subscribe to it from somewhere else and like play a little jingle or something. This just allows you to subscribe to one event, the actual uh, class static event, as opposed to subscribing to like every single enemy that's spawned. But obviously it's contextual, sometimes static's better, sometimes it's not, you just need to evaluate and decide which one to use. So previously I said I would talk about the event keyword a bit more, and you may be surprised, but the event keyword actually does surprisingly little. It doesn't add functionality, it actually removes it. So let's actually remove the event keyword here, and I'll work backwards. So down here in our other class, our member welcomer, instead of subscribing to this event, let's actually directly assign to it. In addition, I will actually trigger this function uh, externally from another class, right? So we're directly assigning to it and we're triggering from the member welcomer class. Now, if we add the event keyword here, we will find that we can now not assign to it. We can still uh, subscribe to it, cannot assign to it, and we now cannot uh, actually fire it 
from an external class. And that is all the event keyword does. It just locks down external permissions a little bit. So now uh, you can obviously only call it from internally. And if we wanted to, we could also uh, directly assign to it as well from, in, from internally here. Uh, so that's all the event keyword does, surprisingly. So as you can see, events are incredibly powerful in both enterprise and game development. But on top of the standard c -sharp events, Unity actually have their own special events called Unity Events. And if you've ever used a button on a canvas, you've actually already been using Unity Events all along. Uh, but let's head across and take a peek and I'll show you how to set up your own Unity Events. So I've got this rather promiscuous little button here and when you touch it, it makes the things on the right do a little dance, which by the way, I spent way too long making, but uh, it was really fun anyway. This is done using the typical Unity setup, right? So we've got our references here to our three different things uh, on mouse down. And by the way, this is not actually a canvas button. This is literally just a game object with a collider on it as you can see. So on mouse down, we're just calling the three functions on our objects. But the problem with this is say tomorrow we want to add another three things, right? Or we want to take one away or change one. Uh, that requires coming back here, changing the code. Uh, it's not very designer friendly, right? In a team, you ultimately want the programmer to design the systems and then you hand it off to the designer and the designer can just hook it all up and make a whole bunch of levels without you really doing anything to the code. Uh, and also it's really just nice if you're just working as a solo developer too. It's nice to just be able to make everything modular. So let's actually change this and use Unity events instead. So we don't need these references anymore. So they can F off and we'll create a Unity event variable and this will be clicked. And instead of all of those function calls, we can literally just say click invoke. And a good thing about Unity events when you're serializing in them in the inspector is you don't actually need to null check them, right? So if you think about uh, creating a list which is serialized in the inspector, you don't actually need to initialize that yourself, do you? It's always going to have a value. Same thing for events. Okay, so not only is that a smaller amount of code, uh, you'll see here that this is now completely modular. Uh, we can just add uh, objects here. And you'll see it works just the same. Tomorrow, you could decide that you want another two more. So your designer could slap two more here and it would be as simple as adding two more uh, events here. And Bob's your uncle, you've expanded your system without changing any code. Now, there are just a few things I would like to note. So I'm sure there are some experienced developers right now just screaming at their monitor that I haven't shown how to unsubscribe and why you should unsubscribe from events. I've just got an extra little demo here to show exactly that. So when I press play, uh, all these balls start spawning and I can click them to destroy them. And every time a new one spawns, they all flash and grow a little bit. So let's have a look at what the code is doing. So here we've got the ball spawner and we're just spawning a few balls. I do a whole bunch right at the start, uh, but every single time a ball is spawned, I've got this public static event here called ball spawned and I just invoke that. So in the ball script, I am subscribing to the event in the on enabled hook and I am unsubscribing using the minus equals in the on disabled hook. Now, the reason we do this is say you spawn 100 balls and they all subscribe to this event and then 50 of them die, on the next time a ball is spawned, our ball spawner is still going to try and fire those 100 events and 50 of them are going to have a null reference exception. Not only that, but this is how you create memory leaks. You're just going to continue subscribing to this event and not clearing the reference to this event. And uh, yeah, that's just, that's memory is accruing. A good rule of thumb is whenever you subscribe to an event, you should also handle the unsubscribe uh, as well. And because we need to unsubscribe from this event, that means we cannot use an anonymous declaration, right? We can't use an anonymous function to subscribe to an event because now we don't have a reference to this. So there's no way for us to unsubscribe from it. And no, uh, this does not work uh, because they are completely different anonymous functions. So whenever you're subscribing to an event and you need to unsubscribe from it, uh, use an actual named method. Uh, there are times when you don't need to unsubscribe from an event. For example, if you know that ball is going to outlive ball spawner, when ball spawner is collected by the garbage collector, obviously all the references to these events are wiped. So you don't need to manually do it then, but just be sure, always know if, if you're gonna outlast it or not. And if not, make sure you are unsubscribing from the event. Another thing to note is 
yes, you get a more decoupled system when you are using events. Obviously, this is still not fully decoupled as uh, ball relies on ball spawner but in my previous example the guild example we were using like an orchestrator the main method to subscribe the events to one another so that's that's relatively decoupled but with decoupling comes reduced clarity so it is harder to know at a glance what is actually listening to these events without like di diving deep into it so it makes passing the code slightly slower it also makes debugging quite a lot harder so don't just go decoupling all the things for the sake of decoupling, right? Making your life harder. Decouple things when you need them to be decoupled. Events in the end are just a way to cross boundary lines. So uh, a good example is if you're building some kind of uh, desktop application, you've got your view, you've got your code behind, you can decouple those things so that you can chop and change the view whenever you want. And you don't actually have to change the code behind, you're just triggering and listening to events. It's also good in things like if you're making uh, an external package, like a third party library for people to install, you can allow them to hook into your lifecycle events. If your components are tightly coupled by design, uh, there's no real reason to use events. So yeah, always just look for the right tool for the job. It's not always events, but they are incredibly powerful. Uh, that is it. I think I just about covered everything. I hope I didn't miss anything. Hello there. So this is editor Matt from the next day. Uh, I did in fact miss something, which is passing delegates around like their parameters for functions. So we'll see here in my guild class here, I've got a function called do some task and it takes an action as a parameter. So we can do some asynchronous logic here. And then finally we can uh, trigger the callback. So then over here, we've got our guild object and we're saying do some task and we're sending in an anonymous function here, which is what we're defining as this. And in the end, we just say callback received. So if we press play, callback received, cool. And of course this doesn't actually need to be an anonymous function. You could uh, quite simply do a uh, function like this, sum function, this will take an int num. And then here you can just uh, put in this and that will work as well. So yeah, you can just pass around delegates like their standard variables. That's it.